M.C. Escher from Wikipedia, the Free Encyclopedia. Moritz Cornelis Escher, who lived from June 17, 1898 to March 27, 1972, was a Dutch graphic artist who made mathematically inspired wordcuts, lithographs, and mezzotints. Early in his career, he drew inspiration from nature, making studies of insects, landscapes, and plants such as lichens, all of which he reused as details in his artworks. He traveled in Italy and Spain, sketching buildings, townscapes, architecture, and the tilings of the Alhambra and La Mesquita, Cordoba, and became steadily more interested in their mathematical structure. His work features mathematical objects and operations including impossible objects, explorations of infinity, reflection, symmetry, perspective, truncated and stellated polyhedra, hyperbolic geometry, and tessellations. Although Escher considered that he had no mathematical ability, he both interacted with the practicing mathematicians George Polya, Arthur Penrose, and Harold Coxter, read mathematical papers by these authors and the crystallographer Friedrich Hogg, and conducted his own mathematical research into tessellation. Escher's art became popular, both among scientists and mathematicians, and in popular culture. Apart from being used in a variety of technical papers, his work has appeared on the covers of many books and albums. He featured as one of the major inspirations of Douglas Hofstadter's 1979 book, Godel Escher Bach. Section 1. Early Life Moritz Cornelis Escher was born on June 17, 1898 in Leeuwarden, Friesland, in a house that forms part of the Prinzessenhof Ceramics Museum today. He was the youngest son of civil engineer George Arnold Escher and his second wife, Sarah Gleichmann. In 1903, the family moved to Arnhem, where he attended primary and secondary school until 1918. Known to his friends and family as Mock, he was a sickly child and was placed in a special school at the age of seven. He failed the second grade. Although he excelled at drawing, his grades were generally poor. He also took carpentry and piano lessons until he was 13 years old. In 1918, he went to the Technical College of Delft. From 1919 to 1922, Escher attended the Harlem School of Architecture and Decorative Arts, learning drawing and the art of making woodcuts. He briefly studied architecture, but he failed a number of subjects, partly due to a persistent skin infection, and switched to decorative arts, studying under the graphic artist Samuel Jesseron de Mesquita. Section 2. Study Journeys In 1922, an important year of his life, Escher traveled through Italy, visiting Florence, San Gimignano, Volterra, Siena, Ravello. In the same year, he traveled through Spain, visiting Madrid, Toledo, and Granada. He was impressed by the Italian countryside and in Granada by the Moorish architecture of the 14th century Alhambra. The intricate decorative designs of the Alhambra, based on geometrical symmetries featuring interlocking, repetitive patterns in the colored tiles, or sculpted into the walls and ceilings, triggered his interest in the mathematics of tessellation and became a powerful influence on his work. Escher returned to Italy and lived in Rome from 1923 to 1935. While in Italy, Escher met Jetta Umiker, whom he married in 1924. The couple settled in Rome where their first son, Giorgio Arnaldo Escher, named after his grandfather, was born. Escher and Jetta later had two more sons, Arthur and Jean. He traveled frequently, visiting, among other places, the Terbo in 1926, the Abruzzi in 1927 and 1929, Corsica in 1928 and 1933, Calabria in 1930, the Amalfi Coast in 1931 and 1934, Gargano and Sicily in 1932 and 1935. The townscapes and landscapes of these places feature prominently in his artworks. In May and June 1936, Escher traveled back to Spain revisiting the Alhambra and spending days at a time making detailed drawings of its mosaic patterns. It was here that he became fascinated to the point of obsession with tessellation, explaining, It remains an extremely absorbing activity, a real mania to which I have become addicted and from which I sometimes find it hard to tear myself away. The sketches he made in the Alhambra formed a major source for his work from that time on. 
He also studied the architecture of the Mesquita, the Moorish Mosque of Cordoba. This turned out to be the last of his long study journeys. After 1937, his works were created in his studio rather than in the field. His art correspondingly changed sharply from being mainly observational, with a strong emphasis on the realistic details of things seen in nature and architecture, to being the product of his geometric analysis and his visual imagination. All the same, even his early work already shows his interest in the nature of space, the unusual perspective and multiple points of view. Section 3 Later Life In 1935, the political climate of Italy, under Mussolini, became unacceptable to Escher. He had no interest in politics, finding it impossible to involve himself with any ideals other than the expressions of his own concepts through his own particular medium, but he was averse to fanaticism and hypocrisy. When his eldest son, George, was forced at the age of nine to wear a Baila uniform in school, the family left Italy and moved to Chateau d'Eau, Switzerland, where they remained for two years. The Netherlands Post Office had Escher design a semi-postal stamp for the Air Fund in 1935, and again in 1949 he designed Netherlands stamps. These were for the 75th anniversary of the Universal Postal Union. A different design was used by Suriname and the Netherlands Antilles for the same commemoration. Escher who had been very fond of and inspired by the landscapes in Italy, was decidedly unhappy in Switzerland. In 1937, the family moved again to Uckel, a suburb of Brussels, Belgium. World War II forced them to move in January 1941, this time to Bar, Netherlands, where Escher lived until 1970. Most of Escher's best-known works date from this period. The sometimes cloudy, cold, and wet weather of the Netherlands allowed him to focus intently on his work. After 1953, Escher lectured widely. A planned series of lectures in North America in 1962 was cancelled after an illness, and he stopped creating artworks for a time, but the illustrations and text for the lectures were later published as part of the book Escher on Escher. He was awarded the knighthood of the Order of Orange Nassau in 1955. In July 1969, he finished his last work, a large woodcut with threefold rotational symmetry called snakes, in which snakes wind through a pattern of linked rings. These shrink to infinity toward both the center and the edge of a circle. It was exceptionally elaborate, being printed using three blocks, each rotated three times about the center of the image, and precisely aligned to avoid gaps and overlaps, for a total of nine print operations for each finished print. The image encapsulates Escher's love of symmetry of interlocking patterns, and at the end of his life, of his approach to infinity. The care Escher took in creating and printing this woodcut can be seen in a video recording. Escher moved to the Rosa Spear House in Lauren in 1970, an artist's retirement home in which he had his own studio. He died there on March 27, 1972, age 73. He is buried at the New Cemetery in Bonn. Section 4. Mathematically Inspired Work Escher's work is inescapably mathematical. This has caused a disconnect between his full-on popular fame and the lack of esteem with which he has been viewed in the art world. His originality and master of graphic techniques is respected, but his works have been thought too intellectual and insufficiently lyrical. Movements such as conceptual art have to a degree reversed the art world's attitude to intellectuality and lyricism but this did not rehabilitate Escher because traditional critics still disliked his narrative themes and his use of perspective. However, these same qualities made his work highly attractive to the public. Escher is not the first artist to explore mathematical themes. Parmigianino, who lived from 1503 to 1540, had explored spherical geometry and reflection in his 1524 self-portrait in a convex mirror, depicting his own image in a curved mirror while William Hogarth's 1754 satire on false perspective foreshadows Escher's playful exploration of errors in perspective. Another early artistic forerunner is Giovanni Battista Piranesi, who lived from 1720 to 1778, whose dark fantastical prints such as the drawbridge in his Carceri prisons sequence depict perspectives into complex architecture with many stairs and ramps peopled by walking figures. 
only with 20th century movements such as Cubism, De Style, Dadaism, and Surrealism did mainstream art start to explore Escher-like ways of looking at the world with multiple simultaneous viewpoints. However, while Escher had much in common with, for example, Magritte's Surrealism, he did not make contact with any of these movements. Subsection 1 Tessellation In his early years, Escher sketched landscapes in nature. He also sketched insects such as ants, bees, grasshoppers, and mantises, which appeared frequently in his later work. His early love of Roman and Italian landscapes and of nature created an interest in tessellation, which he called Regular Division of the Plain. This became the title of his 1958 book, complete with reproductions of a series of woodcuts based on tessellations of the plain, in which he described the systematic buildup of mathematical designs in his artworks. He wrote, Mathematicians have opened the gate leading to an extensive domain. After his 1936 journey to the Alhambra and to La Mesquita, Cordoba, where he sketched the Moorish architecture and the tessellated mosaic decorations, Escher began to explore the properties and possibilities of tessellation using geometric grids as the basis for his sketches. He then extended these to form complex interlocking designs, for example with animals such as birds, fish, and reptiles. One of his first attempts at a tessellation was his pencil, India ink, and watercolor study of regular division of the plane with reptiles, constructed on a hexagonal grid. The heads of the red, green, and white reptiles meet at a vertex, the tails, legs, and sides of the animals exactly interlock. It was used as the basis for his 1943 lithograph, Reptiles. His first study of mathematics began with papers by George Paulia and the crystallographer Friedrich Hogg on plane symmetry groups sent to him by his brother Berend, known as Bear. He carefully studied the 17 wallpaper groups and created periodic tilings with 43 drawings of different types of symmetry. From this point on, he developed a mathematical approach to expressions of symmetry in his artworks using his own notation. Starting in 1937, he created woodcuts based on the 17 groups. His Metamorphosis I, 1937, began a series of designs that told a story through the use of pictures. In Metamorphosis I, he transformed convex polygons into regular patterns in a plane to form a human motif. He extended the approach in his piece Metamorphosis III, which is 4 meters long. In 1941 and 1942, Escher summarized his findings for his own artistic use in a sketchbook, which he labeled, following Hogg, Regel Matige Vrak Verdeling in Asymmetrische Congruente Verhoken, Regular Division of the Plane with Asymmetric Congruent Polygons. The mathematician Dor Schatzschneider unequivocally described this notebook as recording a methodical investigation that can only be termed mathematical research. She defined the research questions he was following as, 1. What are the possible shapes for a tile that can produce a regular division of the plane, that is, a tile that can fill the plane with its congruent images such that every tile is surrounded in the same manner? Two. Moreover, in what ways are the edges of such a tile related to each other by isometries? Subsection 2. Geometries Although Escher did not have mathematical training, his understanding of mathematics was largely visual and intuitive. His art had a strong mathematical component, and several of the worlds which he drew were built around impossible objects. After 1924, Escher turned to sketching landscapes in Italy and Corsica, with irregular perspectives that are impossible in natural form. His first print of an impossible reality was Still Life in Street, 1937. Impossible stairs and multiple visual and gravitational perspectives feature in popular works such as Relativity, 1953. House of Stairs, 1951, attracted the interest of the mathematician Roger Penrose and his father, the biologist Lionel Penrose. In 1956, they published a paper, Impossible Objects, a Special Type of Visual Illusion, and later sent Escher a copy. Escher replied, admiring the Penrose's continuously rising flights of steps, and enclosed a print of Ascending and Descending, 1960. The paper also contained the tri-bar, or Penrose Triangle, which Escher used repeatedly in his lithograph of a building that appears to function as a perpetual motion machine. Waterfall, 1961. 
Escher was interested enough in Hieronymus Bosch's 1500 triptych, The Garden of Earthly Delights, to create part of its right-hand panel, Hell, as a lithograph in 1935. He reused the figure of a medieval woman in a two-pointed headdress and long gown in his lithograph Belvedere in 1958. The image is, like many of his other extraordinary invented places, peopled with jesters, knaves, and contemplators. Escher was thus not only interested in possible or impossible geometry, but was in his own words a reality enthusiast. He combined formal astonishment with a vivid and idiosyncratic vision. Escher worked primarily in the media of lithographs and woodcuts, though the few mezzotints he made are considered to be masterpieces of the technique. In his graphic art, he portrayed mathematical relationships among shapes, figures, and space. Integrated into his prints were mirror images of cones, spheres, cubes, rings, and spirals. Escher was also fascinated by mathematical objects like the Mobius strip, which is only one surface. His wood engraving Mobius Strip II, 1963, depicts a chain of ants marching forever around over what at any one place are the two opposite faces of the object, which are seen on inspection to be parts of the strip's single surface. In Escher's own words, an endless ring-shaped band usually has two distinct surfaces, one inside and one outside. Yet on this strip, nine red ants crawl after each other and travel the front side as well as the reverse side. Therefore, the strip has only one surface. The mathematical influence in his work became prominent after 1936, when having boldly asked the Atria Shipping Company if he could sell with them as traveling artists in return for making drawings of their ships, he surprisingly agreed, and he sailed the Mediterranean, becoming interested in order and symmetry. Escher described this journey, including his repeat visit to the Alhambra, as the richest source of inspiration I have ever tapped. Escher's interest in curvilinear perspective was encouraged by his friend and kindred spirit, the art historian and artist Albert Flocon, in another example of constructive mutual influence. Flocon identified Escher as a thinking artist alongside Piero della Francesca, Leonardo da Vinci, Albrecht Dürer, Wenzel Janmitzer, Abraham Bosse, Gerard Desargues, and Pere Nikon. Flocon was delighted by Escher's Graphik in Tekeningen, Graphics in Drawing, which he read in 1959. This stimulated Flocon and André Barre to correspond with Escher and to write the book La Perspective Curviline, Curvilinear Perspective. Subsection 3, Platonic and Other Solids. Escher often incorporated three-dimensional objects such as the platonic solids, such as spheres, tetrahedrons and cubes into his works, as well as mathematical objects like cylinders and stellated polyhedra. In the print, Reptiles, he combined two- and three-dimensional images. In one of his papers, Escher emphasized the importance of dimensionality. The flat shape irritates me. I feel like telling my objects. You are too fictitious, lying there next to each other, static and frozen. Do something. Come off the paper and show me what you are capable of, so I make them come out of the plane. My objects may finally return to the plane and disappear into their place of origin. Escher's artwork is especially well liked by mathematicians like Doris Schatzschneider and scientists like Roger Penrose, who enjoy his use of polyhedra and geometric distortions. For example, in Gravitation, animals climb around a stellated dodecahedron. The two towers of waterfalls in Possible Building are topped with compound polyhedra, one a compound of three cubes, the other a stellated rhombic dodecahedron known as Escher's solid. Escher had used this solid in his 1948 woodcut Stars, which also contains all five of the platonic solids and various stellated solids representing stars. The central solid is animated by chameleons climbing through the frame as it whirls in space. Escher possessed a 6cm refracting telescope and was a keen enough amateur astronomer to have recorded observations of binary stars. Subsection 4. Levels of Reality Escher's artistic expression was created from images in his mind rather than directly from observations and travels to other countries. His interest in the multiple levels of reality and art is seen in works such as Drawing Hands, 1948, 
where the two hands are shown, each drawing the other. The critic Stephen Poole commented that it is a neat depiction of one of Escher's enduring fascinations. The contrast between the two-dimensional flatness of a sheet of paper and the illusion of three-dimensional volume that can be created with certain marks. In drawing hands, space and the flat plane coexist, each born from and returning to the other, the black magic of the artistic illusion made creepily manifest. Subsection 5 Infinity and Hyperbolic Geometry In 1954, the International Congress of Mathematicians met in Amsterdam and M. G. de Bruyne organized a display of Escher's work at the Stedelijk Museum for the participants. Both Roger Penrose and H. S. M. Coxter were deeply impressed with Escher's intuitive grasp of mathematics. Inspired by relativity, Penrose devised his tri-bar and his father, Lionel Penrose, devised an endless staircase. Roger Penrose sent sketches of both objects to Escher, and the cycle of invention was closed when Escher then created the perpetual motion machine of Waterfall and the endless march of the monk figures of ascending and descending. In 1957, Coxter obtained Escher's permission to use two of his drawings in his paper, Crystal Symmetry and its Generalizations. He sent Escher a copy of the paper. Escher recorded that Coxter's figure of a hyperbolic tessellation gave me quite a shock. The infinite regular repetition of the tiles in the hyperbolic plane growing rapidly smaller towards the edge of the circle, was precisely what he wanted to allow him to represent infinity on a two-dimensional plane. Escher carefully studied Coxter's figure, marking it up to analyze the successfully smaller circles with which he deduced it had been constructed. He then constructed a diagram, which he sent to Coxter, showing his analysis. Coxter confirmed it was correct, but disappointed Escher with his highly technical reply. All the same, Escher persisted with hyperbolic tiling, which he called coxtering. Among the results were the series of wood engravings, Circle Limit 1-4. In 1959, Coxter published his finding that these works were extraordinarily accurate. Escher got it absolutely right to the millimeter. Section 5. Legacy Escher's special way of thinking and rich graphics have had a continuous influence in mathematics and art, as well as in popular culture. In art collections, the Escher intellectual property is controlled by the M.C. Escher Company. Exhibitions of his artworks are managed separately by the M.C. Escher Foundation. The primary institutional collections of original works by M.C. Escher are the Escher Museum in The Hague, the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., the National Gallery of Canada in Ottawa, the Israel Museum in Jerusalem, and the Haus ten Bosch in Nagasaki, Japan. Despite wide popular interest, Escher was for long somewhat neglected in the art world, even in his native Netherlands. He was 70 before a retrospective exhibition was held. In the 21st century, major exhibitions have been held in cities across the world. An exhibition of his work in Rio de Janeiro, however, attracted more than 573,000 visitors in 2011. Its daily visitor count of 9,677 made it the most visited museum exhibition of the year anywhere in the world. No major exhibition of Escher's work was held in Britain until 2015, when the Scottish National Gallery of Modern Art ran one in Edinburgh from June to September 2015, moving in October 2015 to the Dulwich Picture Gallery in London. A major retrospective exhibition has been organized in Italy in 2015 and 2016, attracting over 500,000 visitors in Rome and Bologna before moving to Treviso. In Mathematics and Science, Doris Schatzschneider identifies 11 strands of mathematical and scientific research anticipated or directly inspired by Escher. These are the classification of regular tilings using the edge relationships of tiles, two-color and two-motif tilings, counterchange symmetry or antisymmetry, color symmetry in crystallography, metamorphosis or topological change, covering surfaces with symmetric patterns, Escher's algorithm for generating patterns using decorated squares, creating tile shapes, local versus global definitions of regularity, symmetry of a tiling induced by the symmetry of a tile, orderliness not induced by symmetry groups, the filling of the central void in Escher's lithograph print gallery by H. Lenstra and B. DeSmit. Godel Escher Bach by Douglas Hofstadter 
published in 1979, discusses the ideas of self-reference and strange loops, drawing on a wide range of artistic and scientific sources including Escher's art and the music of J.S. Bach. The asteroid 4444 Escher was named in Escher's honor in 1985. In popular culture, Escher's works have appeared on many album covers including The Scaffold's 1969 L the P with Ascending and Descending, Mott the Hoople's eponymous 1969 record with Reptiles, Beaver and Cross's 1970 In a Wild Sanctuary with Three Worlds, and Mandrake Memorial's 1970 puzzle with House of Stairs and Inside Curl Up. His works have similarly been used on many book covers, including some editions of Edwin Abbott's Flatland which used three spheres, E. H. Gombrich's Meditations on a Hobby Horse with Horsemen, Pamela Hall's Heads You Lose with Plain Feeling One, Patrick A. Horton's Mastering the Power of Story with Drawing Hands, Eric Gama et al.'s Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Object Oriented Software with Swans, and Arthur Markman's Knowledge Representation with Reptiles. The world of Escher markets posters, neckties, t-shirts, and jigsaw puzzles of Escher's artworks. Both Austria and the Netherlands have issued postage stamps commemorating the artist and his works. For further information, please read the following books. The Magic Mirror of M.C. Escher by Escher, co-written with Bruno Ernst, published by Tosh in America. The Graphic Work of M.C. Escher, published by Ballantine. The World of M.C. Escher by J. L. Locker, published by Abrams. M.C. Escher, His Life and Complete Graphic Work by J. L. Locker, published by Abrams. M.C. Escher Kaleidocycles by Doris Schatzschneider and Wallace Walker, published by Pomegranate Communications. M.C. Escher, Visions of Symmetry by Doris Schatzschneider, published by Abrams. M.C. Escher's Legacy, A Centennial Celebration by Doris Schatzschneider and Michelle Emmer, published by Springer Verlag, and The Magic of M.C. Escher by W. F. Veldhuysen, published by Thames and Hudson. This is a spoken recording of the article M.C. Escher from the English Wikipedia, licensed under Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 and the GFDL.